In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to cut out and extract impossible images. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today I'm going to show you how to cut out extremely difficult images. And by the way, if you guys haven't subscribed yet to Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button right now. All right, so here's a good candidate of an image that's not easy. Look at these feathers. We've got all these edges. There's gaps and things showing through here. We've got multicolor background. We've got magenta here. It's showing through at the top as well on the left. And then we've got all this background on the right. So I think this qualifies as a difficult image. So I'm going to give you two big tips in Photoshop. The first one is let's plan what we're going to do. And the second one is this is steak, it's not sushi. We don't have to eat it all in one bite. So often people try to use one tool and try and get everything in one selection. I see so many tutorials like that. Here's the magic trick to do whatever. Well, guess what? Right now it's not a magic trick. I'm gonna show you how to do it and we're gonna do it in pieces and we're gonna use different tools in combination together so you can extract and cut out absolutely anything you want. Okay, so strategy. I'm looking at this and I'm saying magenta here and in another color here. So I'm already saying, why don't we go in two goes? Why don't we try to select this magenta first? Because it's going to be a lot easier to select that color than it is all of this detail here. So the way to select a color is we go under the select menu here and then we're going to go down to color range. So with color range open, what we want to do is we want to select this color. So we've got this eyedropper, we just click once and notice that we've got that selection. Now we can adjust the fuzziness until we get it exactly where we want it. Or there's another option is we can hit this eyedropper with the plus and we can click and drag in there to select it. Notice I can select right here inside this window or I can select directly on canvas. It works in both places. So why don't we just click up there, just make sure we're selecting that. So we've got these areas up here. Now let's play around with the fuzziness. As we pull it, notice how it changes that selection. So we want to make sure that we get everything. So let's pull it over just a little bit more. It doesn't matter if we overselect here, lips and different areas. That's fine. We can deal with that separately. We just want to make sure all our areas are selected. That's looking good. Click OK. So now we've got a selection. We have overselected in a couple of places, but no big deal. Okay, so now we've got the selection and we want to kind of work with this. Don't you ever wish there was a way that we could work with selections rather than just using the selecting tools that we could use brushes and pressure sensitive tools? Well, guess what? We can. And we do that by using the quick mask. We simply click on the Q key or this little icon down there if you ever wondered what that does. And then you see this rubolith overlay. The only problem with this is there's a lot of red in the image already, so it's hard to tell what's selected and what isn't. Well, we can modify this easily by double clicking on the mask. Brings up the quick mask options. Let's change it to another color such as a yellow. And also let's increase our opacity to 90%. Click OK. And once again, hit the Q key. And now we can see a lot easier what we're working on. Okay, I'm gonna take this a step further. I'm going to show you how you can utilize quick masks. This will change a lot of the way that you work inside of Photoshop. If you like what you're seeing so far, hit that like button right now. All right, let's go into channels. We're going to grab the channel out here. I just hate saying channel panel. It's just, it's like saying biggie fries. I just can't bring myself to say it, but all right, there we go. It's a little cringy, the channel panel. Ugh. Um, okay, does that cringe you out too? If it does, <laughs> let me know in the comments. So here we've got a selection. Notice here the quick mask is selected. So if I hit the Q key, notice we just have a selection, just a regular marching ant selection. Watch what happens. Hit the Q key. Now it adds an alpha channel, which is a quick mask. So by hitting the Q key, we're toggling between a channel and a selection. And this is awesome because a channel enables us to paint on that selection and do a lot of things. Let me let you into a little secret. Channels are not that difficult. All they are is a way of saving and storing masks. In fact, what we have for layer masks are identical to channels. And they've been there since the beginning of Photoshop. 
Layers and layer masks came into Photoshop 3, but before that we used channels and you probably heard of things like channel chops and things like that. That's what we did back in the day before layers. And yes, I used Photoshop back then. <laughs> All right, knowing that, that means we can hide RGB and we can just look at the channel. The areas of black are selected, the areas of white are unselected. So we wanna clean this up. Notice all these little spots here in the white and the little spots here in the black. We don't have to go through and paint all of those, thank goodness. We can just hit Control L or Command L brings up levels. Now we wanna crush these blacks. Let's just pull this in. Notice that fills them in nicely. There's a few little spots there could take it all the way there but you want to be a little careful crushing it too much because notice it's also changing the edges see that so take it to about here and some of these other ones we'll just manually clean up these areas of white shouldn't be a problem and you can see here on the histogram where the main ones are there so we'll just pull that in notice how it cleans up a lot of those areas and now it's looking good now there's one other one is the gray slider here this gray slider is really going to affect your edges this is what's known as choking a mask watch these edges if i want to lessen the edge i go that way if i want to make the edge bigger i go the other way so this is how you choke a mask and just get a perfectly nice nice edge all right great now we've done that, why don't we pick up these other areas we missed out. Let's just grab a brush. And what we want to do with the brush is just make sure we're working on a hard edged. This is one of those few times I use a hard edge brush because for masking, it just does a nice job. So I'm just painting right now with black. I'm just picking up all these areas very, very quickly. And don't even worry about this other side. We'll come to that later. All right, so we've got this side here. Then we get areas like this. Do we want to select this or not? Well, we just click on RGB, and now we can see the mask overlaying the image. Let's hide the mask for one second. And we look in here, and we could let that selection happen or not. I just want to get rid of that. So here's another thing. When we're painting with white, notice what that does is it takes away from the mask. If I hit the X key and paint with black, it adds to the mask. So we just want to kind of just pick that up and that's going to give us a good edge. And I'm just using the bracket key on the keyboard to make the brush smaller. Left and right bracket keys do that. And we're just kind of picking up those areas. Okay, let's turn off there and look at the mask. Now look at this, we've got a nice clean black and white mask. All right, so here's the thing. I could save this mask or do anything with it, or I can just hit the Q key and it just goes back into a selection. So I think that's looking pretty good. We've picked up all these areas of magenta. We've got half of our image selected. So right now you can hit the delete key to get rid of it, but we don't want to do that. We want to work non-destructively, so we're going to use a mask. Now, whenever an area is selected, when you create a mask, it keeps a selected area and hides everything else. We want to do the opposite. So the invert key is the alt key or the option key. And now we click on the mask, hides out those areas, and we're off to a good start. Excellent. Now let's start working on the other side of the photo. Click on the photo, not the mask. Make sure the move tool's active. That's the V key. And then we're gonna go into select and we're gonna go back to color range. Okay, so why don't we click on the color there just to select it. Then we're gonna hit our eyedropper with the plus tool and we're just gonna kind of tap a few times to kind of pick up the color. picking it up pretty nicely. However, it's already got this little earpiece. So let's click on there. Notice we're not able to get that and that at the same time because it's a similar color. So what does that mean? No big deal. It just means we're going to go up here and we're going to select this area up the top first. And then we're going to come back and do that one later. Once again, we can just do this over multiple passes. Good. Click OK. Notice that these areas now are selected. Let's hit the quick mask. And all we're worried about is up here. We don't care about the rest of this image. So let's have a look and see what our mask looks like. Let's choke this mask. Control L. Make those blacks nice and solid. Clean up the whites. And if you don't need to use the midtones too much, don't because we don't want to shift the edge too much. 
click back on RGB, hit the Q key once again, and now we've just got this active selection over here. Well, select our mask, grab a brush with a black brush, and now with this selection active, we can just simply paint away the area we don't want. And notice it's protecting the areas. Nice and easy. And we can even pick up those areas down there. Control D to deselect. We're almost there. One more shot down here and we're going to be there. All right, let's do it one more time. Select color range. And now we want to select down here. So let's just click to select the color. Grab the plus tool and select in there. And we're just kind of tapping in there, picking up those edges. Notice that edge is kind of getting a little bit gray. So we don't want that to happen. There we go. Let's play with the fuzziness. I use the minus key, by the way, right there, the minus one to tap on it. And we just want to get somewhat of a good selection here. We might not get it perfect because it's a pretty difficult area here. Click OK. Let's grab our quick mask once again. And now with the magic of quick mask, we can clean this up. Now, here's a cool trick. We can combine a quick selection tool with our area there. So look at this. So even though we're inside a selection because of the quick mask, we can still combine our other selection tools. So we're just going to go down here and we're just going to select those edges a little bit. Excellent. And now we want to get rid of these. Let's just hide the RGB so we can see we're working on black and white. Let's grab a white brush. See how that white brush just gets rid of everything. Looks like we want to go in here, but let's see if we can choke it. Control L. So rather than painting this out, if we just pull the white slider over, we can clean that up. Looking pretty good. Now let's grab a black brush and we're just going to clean up some of these little areas around the edges. Don't need all that. Q key. Grab the layer mask. And of course we want to paint with black. Now we just go in here and just grab these areas. Zoom. Control D. And we're done with the cutout. Now notice there's a little bit of a black fringe around the edge. So we can quickly get rid of that. Now a great tool for doing this would be the selector mask tool. But the selector mask tool is not active because we didn't use the quick selection tool. But here's the thing, we can full Photoshop into giving us select mask. Let's do it right now. So we're going to go here, control, click on the layer mask. That selects our layer mask now. And we just grab any masking tool or any selection tool. And select a mask will now come active. We can pop it open. Right, it's looking pretty good. This is against white. If we were putting this against another color, it'd probably look pretty spot on. So we just got a little bit up here maybe. So let's set our radius to one and see how that looks. All right, with our radius set to one, grab this little feather tool here and we're just gonna gently just go around the edges here. And see how that just kind of cleans up those edges. So I'm not really seeing issues with these edges around here. There's no color fringing there. There's a little bit here. But I wouldn't even bother going and painting in those areas that you're not seeing the color fringe. And then we simply click OK. All right, so now we've got a selection active. It hasn't actually done anything yet because we're working on the mask. And we've just got the selection. So why don't we hit the brush key and see what's happening? What we want to do is select our image and see what's selected. So if I paint with this, Notice that this area is selected and not the background. So what we want to do is we want to select the background and not the image. So Command Shift I will inverse the selection. All right, so what we want to do now is we just want to kind of get rid of it. So we could just hit the delete key and that will just refine everything. So why don't we do that? And then turn off the selection and now we've got beautiful edges. 
So if you like that, smash the like button right now. So I've got a question for you though. Um, the question I have is what is your favorite tool inside of Photoshop? If you could choose one tool, let me know in the comments underneath. Okay, so this technique may take just a little bit more work than those one, two click tricks. And trust me, those are great, good starting places. I've got lots of tutorials on those myself uh, on the site. But I do see a lot of tutorials that work really well on screen um, or in theory, but in the real world where you wanna blow them up, make them large or print them, they don't hold up. This technique definitely will. So if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now, get a new Photoshop and Lightroom tutorial from me every single week, usually on a Tuesday. And also don't forget to ring that little notification bell so YouTube will tell you when I upload a new video. So anyway guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.